Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're gonna talk about comic books and manga, and it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. We're gonna talk about the difference between how manga sales are doing during the shutdown versus the direct market comic book industry, which is kind of flailing about right now. And I'm gonna say that uh, manga sales are killing it, and the comic book industry is basically trying to kill itself. A uh, very, very interesting dichotomy we got going on here. And I'm going to talk about some numbers uh, from Viz Media, one of the largest, probably, I think, the largest manga publisher here in the U.S. And uh, then we're going to talk about what is going on in the direct market with North American comics. And uh, just a lot of the, the drama. We hear more about the drama with the comic book industry than we do about the sales numbers. Uh, if we hear about the sales numbers anymore, it's usually titles are not selling very well. People are scrambling, trying to figure out a new way forward, and and there is a way forward. Uh, you know, look at manga sales, look at graphic novel sales, look at people selling direct to consumer. There's a way forward. It's just not the way that uh, the comic book industry has been uh, pushing forward, and things are going to have to change. If you want to survive, if you want to make comics going forward, you're going to have to adapt. It's absolutely changing. So before we get into it, please give us a sub if you haven't done so already and check out our pre-sale for our Clownfish TV enamel pin with Bubbly Steve. Got a couple days to go on that yet. You can go to shopclownfish.com and uh, check that out. We would appreciate it. So this article actually uh, was posted over the weekend and it came to my attention via comicbook.com. Uh, Megan Peters did a nice kind of roundup of what was said, but they talked to the Vice President of Publishing and Sales, Kevin Hamrick, at Viz Media. And he's talking about how how well manga is selling during the shutdown. And you would think that comics would sell well. You know, everybody is stuck inside their house. Uh, you would think that they would be reading comics like they're watching Netflix and playing video games. But that hasn't been the case with the direct market because the comic shops are shut down. That doesn't stop manga because manga can be bought uh, at any retailer. You know, you can buy manga from Amazon. Uh, you can buy it direct from many, many outlets online. And uh, people are buying manga like crazy. So this is really interesting. Um, this is coming from ICV2, a well-regarded industry website. You absolutely should check them out. If you have not done so, they cover comics and games and, and showbiz and all of that. Strictly numbers, uh, which I like. So ICV2 says, where do you see the manga market right now? How is Viz during the pandemic? Viz has been doing extraordinarily well, says Kevin Hamrick. Uh, our sales are beyond expectations. We started off the year strong and then the pandemic hit and we took a look at our business. We even had talks about, should we revise our revenue budget and our goals? And should we revise our publication schedule? We did neither. We released everything on schedule. We have not touched our revenue budget and we're beating that and then some. It seems that our manga readers are very resilient. They're going to go get their manga one way or another. Even though the brick and mortar stores are closed, we did see a huge shift to online sales. Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million, and Write Stuff. I recommend Write Stuff, by the way. They have all kinds of really cool stuff. Uh, we also noticed that there seemed to be this binge effect. People were binging on manga like they were binging on Netflix because our box set sales exploded. Really? See, this is surprising because it's it, it shouldn't be surprising. This is where all the action is. You want to know why those Karens in Australia are trying to, to ban manga and light novels? Because it absolutely is where everything is going. Uh, again, I mean, it's weird because it's like 2004 all over again. Hopefully we don't have uh, the big implosion that was brought about by, as I recall, Tokyo Pop putting all their eggs into one basket with Borders. And then when Borders went out of business, it took like the entire uh, manga industry with it for, for like a decade. Okay, this is, uh, this is Kevin Hamrick from Viz again. We could see which books were selling. People were buying sequential volumes within a series. And the number of volume ones that we sold during this period is just crazy. Even deep, deep backlist. So people are probably like, well, now's as good a time as ever to start reading Dragon Ball from the beginning. So let's go get Dragon Ball number one and, and see where it goes. 
I had this fear going in with the stores closing. How are people going to discover new series? In-store shopping is quite a big part of that. That played out because our backlist sales are extremely strong. We flipped those, our backlist to frontlist sales during this period. People were either getting into a new series that they have heard of before, or their friends recommended, or they've had great reviews online, or something they've always wanted to start getting into. For Viz is ex extremely good, but the manga market is strong as well. We outperformed the book trade during the COVID period, that critical period of nine weeks. We outperformed that. We did not drop as much as the category did. We propped up the category with our sales, so we're very happy right now. Actually, manga sales propped up comic sales last year because most of the growth in comics has been manga and graphic novels. Uh, last year, they were like, look, we're over a billion dollars. They had to roll in crowdfunding. They had to roll in manga and, and graphic novels. And these are things that the comic book industry for years kind of uh, eschewed. They were not they were not into manga. The comic book, the mainstream comic book industry didn't care about manga. They didn't care about kitty books. They didn't care about, you know, scholastic books or whatever. And they sure as hell didn't care about crowdfunding. And now they need it to make their numbers look better to justify the existence, I think, of Marvel and DC Comics for their respective uh, corporate overlords. So this is, um, they asked him what's going on in the comic book store channel. So uh, the guy from Viz says, we're ahead of last year, even with the disruption of Diamond. They came back roaring out of the gate with our books in particular. We talked to some of the bigger comic shops and they're very happy that we were continuing to publish our books and that the books were available. The supply chain was full. Several of them found they could open accounts with Simon & Schuster or Ingram, Baker & Taylor, or even Bookazine and get our books. So it didn't matter. It didn't matter to Viz that Diamond went out. It didn't, it didn't affect them at all. Like I said, our readers are resilient. I think the direct market was also very resilient. Um, in San Francisco, they found ways to ship books to people. They found ways for curbside pickup. So uh, they ask him, what do you attribute the interest in manga to? Is it less competition from other forms of entertainment? This is very important. And this is something I was on uh, Thinking Critical with uh, Wes and Perch over the weekend. And this is why, a big reason why manga is killing comics. I think it's cost effective. It's a cheap way into entertainment. Our manga is only $9.99 and discounted online almost everywhere. Yeah, you can pick books up for seven or eight bucks. For the price of a month of a subscription service, you can read the majority of a series or at least a few volumes. Also, people can't go to the movie theaters, uh, so that's money they're not spending in theaters. So this is actually uh, very exciting. Um, this is exciting because comics are not dead. And we're, when we're talking about comics dying, we're talking about the comic book industry dying. We're talking about the direct market. The direct market is on a suicide run. And I want to compare and contrast. I'm going to do that in a little bit. But one, one book in particular I want to bring up again is Demon Slayer. And it's not just that Viz prints it. It's because it's really interesting to see how, how manga and anime work in synergy to promote in IP and how catastrophically terrible, uh, just absolutely terrible uh, Marvel has done with having that synergy between the comics and their movies and how they could have uh, probably played off of each other uh, a little bit better. So Demon Slayer's final volume came out in Japan and it sold 2 million copies in three days. 2 million copies in Japan, a country much smaller than the US, 2 million copies in three days. That is not something that will ever happen over here. And that just shows how many more people read manga uh, in Japan than people read uh, comics over here. And I think a lot of it is it's widely available. It's very hard to find comic books here. You have to track down a comic book shop and then you're gonna pay four or five dollars for 20, 30 pages of stuff that may or may not be good, you know? But what's interesting about Demon Slayer, because it is selling very, very well, but the trajectory of it, it started in 2016 and it did okay. But then the anime came out. When the anime came out, and this is how this works. When the anime came out, you can see this upward trajectory in sales. So people watch the anime, they wanted to finish the story or they would watch it and go back and start reading from number one in the manga. And that's where it blew up. And it didn't actually blow up until last year. 
which people don't understand. They're like, oh yeah, it's always been a hit. No, it was kind of a sleeper hit. It was out for like three years, three or four years before it blew up. And once it blew up, it blew up. And a lot of that is because of the anime, because in Japan, the anime actually acts as a commercial uh, for the manga. The anime, of course, starts at the beginning. The manga is usually farther ahead. And as people watch the anime, they go out and they buy the manga. They buy the merchandise. And a lot of these franchises don't blow up until they become an anime. And that's sort of the, uh, the end goal for a lot of uh, mangaka, a lot of manga artists, is they want that animated series because they know that's going to help their book sales. Okay, now compare that to how they do it here in the U.S. When the MCU is at its peak, when everybody, everybody knows who Tony Stark is, everybody knows who Steve Rogers is, that's when Marvel Comics decides to switch all their characters out from 2015 to 2017. Like, interest in these characters has never been higher, and Marvel decides they're going to go the opposite direction. Now, just think about what, what if there was more synergy between the movies, the TV shows, and the comics? What if, you know, the animated series of, of, a, car, of a comic book was pretty much beat for beat the actual uh, comic book? You know, they did it with the Max. If you remember the Max back in the 90s on MTV, they literally just took panels from the comic book and animated it. Uh, and then I think it did help the uh, the trade paperback sales. But if if we did that here in the States, just imagine how much more successful the comics might actually be. I mean, this is just a thought. But what happens is they usually take the comic, they, they loosely... Uh, base the movie on the comic or the animated series on the comic. And yeah, sometimes people go back and buy the comics. I mean, The Walking Dead, look at that, was actually pretty different, the comic from the TV show. But, you know, the TV show was a commercial for the comics. And that that seems to work. And that's one thing that Japan has figured out that we have not figured out over here. We, we for whatever reason, America, which is supposed to be a capitalist nation, we, we always run the opposite direction, at least when it comes to the comic book industry. Like, here's how you make money, guys. We're showing you how you make money. And they go the opposite direction and, and not make money. And then they get online and they bitch about how they're not making money. And it's, it's right there in front of you. You know, if we would adopt a more Japanese-minded uh, 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 business strategy, we might actually get comic sales up. Uh, there might be more money to go around. But the, the American comic book industry does not want to make money. It doesn't want to make money. So, yeah, look at that. I mean, we will never hit anything like this in America. One Piece, 470 million copies of One Piece. In, you know, I, I, that's insane. And Demon Slayer's coming up. Demon Slayer in one year sold like 60 million copies, I think. And that's because of the anime taking off. That's not going to happen here in the, the U.S. You know, because we just we don't have the audience for comics and we haven't figured it out yet. Uh, and I don't think it's I don't think we're going to figure it out. I think the comic book industry is on a suicide run and, and we're going to I'm going to talk about that. So let's let's now that we've had the good news, let's talk about the bad news and let's talk about how how just fucking depressing the American direct market is. This scene compared to Japan, compared to what they're doing over there, you come over here and it is depressing as hell. You've got the shops are closed. You've got diamond as a monopoly. You've got overpriced pamphlets. Um, you've got creators out there on social media running at the damn mouth, constantly getting into fights. Uh, you've got whisper networks of people trying to keep other people out of the comic book industry entirely because they don't like them because it's all about politics now. You know, it's not even about making product. They're not even in a business anymore. It's 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 just about uh, you know keeping certain people they don't like out of their lunch table effectively, which is so stupid. People try to do an end run around the comic shop system because frankly, it doesn't work all that well. <laughs> you know, it really does not for selling volumes of material, not for creators. I mean, it's great for the shop owners. There's always going to be a place. There's always going to be a place for uh, comic shops, but to get comics in everybody's hands, you're going to have to go outside of that. So more and more people are going to be doing, uh, you know, direct to consumer. That just seems to be the way things are going. And that has worked out very well for people during the shutdown. Well, we've got people bitching about that. You know, it's just insane. It's just a, a, a horrible situation. We've got 
Hey, yo, all the dirt coming up now of all the people working in comics uh, that are doing naughty things, supposedly. We're canceling people every other day. You don't hear about this kind of drama in Japan. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it does seem that in Japan they're focused on telling good stories, uh, making comics for literally everybody. I mean, if you're a 65-year-old grandmother, there's a comic for you. 12-year-old kid, there's a comic for you. There's a comic for everybody, and everybody's reading comics over there. Over here, it's a it's a, it's a niche thing, and it's it's becoming more and more niche as uh, we have a lot of uh, political-minded people coming into comics and using the comic book characters as mouthpieces for their own politics, their own depressing politics. I mean, most American comics now are depressing as hell. This is it right here. Like, it's just depression. And it's so weird, like, you look at the energy in manga and Japan and anime and all this, this really cool stuff going on, and then you come over and look at the American direct market, and it's depressing as hell. Why are kids picking up manga? Why are they picking up graphic novels? I don't want my kids reading depressing shit. You know, a lot of people, it's not fun. You got, it's like, look, these, these comic books are not your couch session. It's not your therapy session, but that's what a lot of these creators are turning these characters into. And it's not fun. We've got a never, uh, you know, rotating stable of creators. They don't keep people on books for more than a couple issues. It's just, it's, it's, I feel like American creators are not committed to making the best comics they can make and selling the most comics they can sell. It feels like a lot of them are just biding their time in the comic book industry because they don't know what else to do or they like the platform or they're hoping they're gonna get a Hollywood deal eventually, whatever, but they're phoning it in. I think a lot of these creators are phoning it in because they spend so much time on Twitter, it's amazing they get any comic book work done, right? Um, so yeah, and here's what's probably potentially maybe gonna happen. And this is what I talked about on Thinking Critical uh, over the weekend is, you know, Marvel is canceling a bunch of books. They must be re-examining their business model. Disney's running out of money. Does Disney want to piss around with comics that aren't selling? Now, if Disney had access to Demon Slayer or something like that that was selling freaking two million copies in three days, they'd be all over it. But Marvel Comics is lucky if they can sell 30,000 copies of a book. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's ridiculous. And it's, it's these big companies are going to look at this and be like, this is a complete waste of time, waste of time, waste of money, waste of resources. And we have to wonder how long until they just, you know, outsource the comics production to other companies. You know, same with Warner. They're, <laughs> they're cutting back, man. They, they're cutting like crazy uh, Warner media. Uh, they announced Friday, they're reorganizing the whole company basically to focus on HBO max. And uh, there was talk before that they were going to sell off their games division. The games division actually makes money. I don't know if DC Comics is making money or making enough money to make it worth it for them. Maybe they'll just outsource those characters too. You know, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But no nothing in America touches the sales of manga in Japan. And we're doing it wrong. We're doing it wrong. Instead, we get stuff like this, um, <laughs> you know, coming from Rooster Teeth, which is probably going to get cut here pretty soon, uh, too. But it's it's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy to compare the two. And uh, yeah, manga is going to continue dominating all over the globe. Again, it resonates with more people. We've got stories. I mean, we've got true diversity. We've got stories literally for everybody, every demographic and you don't have a lot of that political baggage with it. Uh, people, everybody working on manga because it's such a cutthroat industry, they're interested in selling as much as they can. It's about the sales, because if you're not selling, you're out the door. It's as simple as that. Shonen Jump, very cutthroat. If your comic is not popular, if it does not sell, it's over. It is over. And I think American comics need to adopt that attitude. Um, maybe not as extreme because I know we've had people comment before that, uh, you know, manga artists are overworked over there, but at least the attitude of like, I'm going to work, I'm going to make as I'm going to make comics that as many people as possible are going to read. I'm going to sell as many comics as I can sell and I'm going to make money. I'm going to make money for myself. I'm going to make money for my publisher. I'm going to make money so I can hire people to make more stuff, you know, and just keep on rolling like an actual business like an actual business 
instead of a plaything. So I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.